I'm here with Mike Adams, one of the world's greatest ring announcers. Mike, I'm blessed to have you, my friend. I appreciate you inviting me, and you know, it's an honor to have you guys in my store, and uh, I appreciate you taking some time out. So, how long have you been ring announcing? When did you get your start? I'll tell you, my first show was in the 90s, and uh, it was Sean McClain against John McClain. And for those of you who are familiar with the Albuquerque boxing scene, Sean McClain was a tremendous uh, fighter. He ran up against the tough Johnny McClain, uh, and that's how I got into the business. That was the very first fight I did, uh, and then it kind of moved on from there. Well, that, that's amazing. The fact that you've, you've gone up in the ranks of boxing as a ring announcer, um, it's, it's given you such credibility in the cage fighting world. When King of the Cage was looking for a, a staple ring announcer, they called you. Well, you know, I was fortunate. You know, you had a lot to do with that, and that's well, Jim well, Burleson, you. of course. And then Terry Trebilcock Jr. has hired me for many shows, including pay-per-views, and I just did one in Rio Doso. And I've done many shows for yourself. Yes, you uh, and, and Cortez, Colorado, with a lot of King of the Cage, and I'm sure you're gonna be showing footage of that today. So, um, yeah, I have been blessed of doing a lot of shows, and uh, boxing is where I started, and uh, I enjoy both sports uh, tremendously, and it's an honor just to participate. It's always about the fighters. All I do is relay a message, and then everybody's there to see the fighters. Well, I, I don't think that I've ever seen a more professional ring announcer. I know that there's a lot of ring announcers out there, and a lot of them are quality ring announcers, but I've, I've never experienced the professionalism like I've experienced when you're ring announcing. What, what's given you that training? I mean, do you, have you taken classes? Have you, I mean, wh what is your background as far as speaking goes? Because when you get up there, man, you really, you control the crowd. You are the attitude of the fans at, at live events. Well, I'll tell you, I appreciate the compliments. Um, I think the professionalism comes since I was at a young age when my father instilled that it's very important to say a person's name right. Uh, we're very proud of our names um, and that's what we're given. That's what we're known by. Um, for me to be professional and for me to be the, uh, the guy um, uh, in the middle of the ring where people are listening to, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's professionalism that needs to be displayed because the event uh, is so big. So Mike, why did you open round one? I'll tell you what, round one um, you know, with us uh, doing so much, and when I say us, it's a team effort. And with the ring announcing, with the radio show, we just thought, hey, look, let's have an outlet uh, and do a store that sells signature shirts. You know, a lot of people wear the gear. Tap Out has made the gear famous. Silver Star got in the game. Affliction, Bad Boy. There's so many brands out there, Cage Fighter, that at this particular time, Booyah. At this particular time, what we decided to do was say, hey, look, let's incorporate it. And it's kind of like this. You have favorite fighters. Whether your favorite fighter is Manny Pacquiao, Keith Jardine, Carlos Condit, we have their shirt right here in this store. So you're actually wearing the shirt that your fighter sometimes comes out to, to the cage, and it makes you uh, appreciate uh, what they do by wearing the shirt and actually saying, hey, look, this is who I'm a fan of. And whether you like Kimbo Slice, Jake Shields, Diego the Nightmare Sanchez, Chuck Liddell, we have their shirts in this store. Tito Ortiz, uh, I can go on and on. Uh, here's the place to get all your signature material. What's next for Mike Adams? Well, you know, I've been blessed this year. Um, you know, I was able to do ESPN2 Friday Night Fights with Pedro Angulo, who is now a world champion. I was able to do Showbox, the new generation. I was able to do pay-per-views with guys like Zab Judah as the headliner and Joel Casamayor, who uh, three-time world champion, Olympic gold medalist, um, Yori Boy Campas and Hector Macho Camacho Jr. So in the future, um, I've already lined up a few shows uh, for January, February, and March. I'll be doing a Showtime show January 29th right here in Albuquerque, New Mexico as Showtime Boxing makes its way here uh, to Albuquerque. Um, so I'm looking forward to the calendar to be filled um, and just looking for continued success in 2010. Well, now, you've also got the radio show. In the radio show, you actually started the first combative sports radio show here in New Mexico, and your ratings went through the roof. There, you know, there's a couple of people that have, that have come on board and done some things that are similar. What, what's in store for the radio show? I mean, you've, you've, you've got international sponsors. You've got international guests. Um, tell us more. What's going to happen with, uh, with On the Mic? Sure. Well, it's on 610 D Sports Animal. Uh, it's on your AM dial, 610, of course, uh, is the biggest radio station in town when it comes to AM sports. I, I just wanted to thank you again, my friend. It's, it's wonderful to know you. Absolutely. And again, I want to welcome you to round one. Uh, this store is in Coronado Center. It's an MMA and boxing store. Um, we've had guys like Sugar Shane Mosley walk through the doors. The Tap Out guys have been in here signing autographs. Paul Buintello. I mean, the list goes on and on of guys who just come into the store 
Um, and it's unique. It's boxing, it's MMA, you see the pictures on the wall, and I want to invite each and every one of you, come out to Coronado Center. We're right next to Fuddruckers. Ask for Chewy, he's the store manager. And again, I want to wish you continued success. This man right here, and I'm not saying it because he's interviewing me today. This guy's a hard worker, he's in the community, and he's been involved with this for a long time. So Jim, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Take care of yourself. Appreciate it. Well, if we're going to be talking upsets, let's go to the next chapter in that book, where Mono Otero faces off against Brad Nordquist for the Desert Extreme Welterweight Belt, a belt left vacant by retired fighter Mike Lucero. Let's go check that fight out. What we got here is Brad Nordquist coming out in one of his... I don't know why he wears a mask. If you look at his tattoos, the guy never needs a mask on. But, hey, to each his own. Cowboy Mono Otero coming in, represented by uh, Team Harding out of Belen, New Mexico. I'm sitting here again with uh, Mike Saavedra, getting pretty excited about his upcoming show in January. Appreciate you being here, buddy. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it a lot. Raul Parada, the referee given these two fighters their final instructions in case they missed it the last 30 fights that they've been in. For some reason, main events always get explained the rules better. Raul Parada has been uh, refereeing fights for probably 14 years, longer than MMA has actually been around. Judo black belt. And the fight begins. Rocky Balboa in the right-hand side. Booyah. Bank Teller in the Booyah shorts. Comes out swinging. Both these guys, they always put on a show. Mano Otero, we just saw beat Adam Oki. Coming out aggressive, dominating, dominating, just raining down bombs. He feeds off the crowd's excitement. Brad Norquist, used to being on the bottom, he's actually started off his MMA career at 0-6. What's some of the fighters, the caliber fighters he's fine now? Well, you know, he's fought, uh, he fought Alberto Crane in Albuquerque. He's, he actually takes a lot of fights at the last minute. He is, a, uh, he is a fighter at heart, and it is not about the win for him, but uh, about the fight itself. He, he's been called, I, I know I've called him probably seven times the night before a fight and asked him to fill in, and he stepped up. Always ready to fight. Mano Otero is a, uh, started off as a, a wrestler, a boxer, and is learning some jujitsu here. Brad Norquist working the triangle. Now your fight coming up at the, at the Armory in Socorro. Our guy, uh, our guy Mano Otero here got his premier debut fight at that very same arena. It's situated very similar to this show here. You got the, uh, you know, you got the arena look. Um, you know, it looks like a gym, which is which is very similar to the Armory that you're preparing for. I believe that that's the cage you're going to be using. Yeah, that's true. Looks like Brad is not going to give up that triangle, and that is the end of the fight. Brad Norquist went from 0-6 early in his career to current Desert Extreme welterweight champion. Booyah. <laughs>